No, bend your knees, pull towards you. So yes, pull towards you. So this is also the rhombus test is positive. So yes, he has got the cerebellar syndrome as well as the dorsal column is also affected. The floppy, and you see the tone, you see the tone. So actually we are looking for, as I said, we are looking for hypertonia. Hello, sir. Good morning. My name is Dr. Sam, one of the PCS candidate here today. So yes, immediately after the six important steps that you come up here and you need to tell this young boy because this lower limbs examination should be started with the gait, my dear. So the gait examination that you need to tell to your patients that, sir, will you be able to walk for me? So this is very much important because the patient cannot walk. So how can you start the work? So you need to tell and ask his permission whether he can able to work for me. And once again, if the any of the bedside, maybe the wheelchair will be there. So you can understand the patient is really unable to walk. So yes, you can ask him, will he be able to walk for me so that you can just stand up and make some of the walking and see the gate. So this boy is really unable to walk because of the ataxia, the balance problem, both sided. But we are demonstrating here how this young boy having such a both sided ataxia but you shouldn't do in the real exams because he's really ataxia. It's really difficult a single man supporting him and doing an ataxia and, and showing the gait examinations. All right, let's start. Yes, try to walk for me, sir. Yes. So you can see he has the difficulty of walking. And really difficult, so uh, in the real exams, you don't need to examine that gait in his case, but we are just showing him how the difficulty is going on. So the two doctors has to take the good supports to walking and he needs the walking aids to walk. So now turn around, turn around. So yes, yes. So really difficult for him to walk, you see the legs. Really walking difficulty, but see the gate here. It's a bit of spastic gate that we can observe. Yes, now turn round. Turn round. Yes. Turn round. Yes. Once again, you see a bit of spastic, and the most important, the ataxic gate. Yes, the ataxic. He's a toxic. So, yes. Now turn around once again. Yes. Yes. Yes, see. So he's really a toxic. So you have to give the two, both sides the support on the both sides. So, no, just stand now. Turn round, turn round once again. Turn round. Turn round. Yes. Yes. So can you close your feet together? Yes. Now see, it's really difficult to stand for him. To look forward, look forward. Right. So now see, how he is a toxic really? Ready, one, two, three. So you see that he is a toxic. So he is really a toxic so that, yes, it's really difficult to do the test in real exams. So you shouldn't do that. So now get back. And once again, now close your eyes. Close your eyes. So once again, he's more a toxic also, you see. So yes, with the open eyes, a toxic is a cerebellar syndrome. And with the closed eyes, more ataxic, yes. So this is also the rhombus test is positive. So yes, he has got the cerebellar syndrome as well as the dorsal column is also affected. Yes, now open your eyes. Now, now yes, get the seat back, sir. Yes, fine, the doctor. As you have seen the gait examinations and he has a typical ataxic gait, my dear. And along with the ataxia that we have seen, he has a little bit high step that we can see and observe, and really a difficulty in walking altogether. So yes, 
immediately after the gate examination that you have seen that he has the test that he have done, the Takshi test, there is a cerebral science with the open eyes, he has the problem and also with the closed eyes with the more ataxic. So you can understand he has a toxic gait as well as he has the rhombus states also positive. So cerebral ataxia once again along with the sensory ataxia all together, the diagnosis, the single diagnosis is the Fredrick's ataxia. Assuming that, that you made your diagnosis of Fredrick's ataxia, then you just bring your patients back onto the couch and then start examination of the lower limbs, then inspect the lower limb start. All right, you see the side view, he has got a pace covers. So this is another side view on the left hand side. So this is also the pace covers, you see. So you see the pace covers. So it's a cavity, my dear, you see the cavity. So these are pace covers, the typical pace covers. So typical pace covers means the long standing peripheral neuropathy. So long standing peripheral neuropathy and the joint position sense because he want to cough and cuffed onto the floor. So that's why this pace covers is a long standing feature, is a long standing peripheral neuropathy. So you see here, you see on the left hand side also, you see the pace covers. So this is the cavity, you see a big cavity is here. So this is also a pace cover. So these pace covers are bilaterally pace covers. Young boy, once again, the feature of the long standing peripheral neuropathy. So now you have to start immediately after the inspect that you found that the, some of the wasting more on the distal without fasciculations and without any scars. Yes, my dear doctor, then you need to do the motor examination. As I said, the motor examination starts from TPR, PRCC, my dear. So the tone power reflexes and the plantar response and the C for clonus and C for coordination. These are the tests that you need to do and demonstrate the examiners that you are expecting the findings to show to make your diagnosis that you already diagnosed within your mind that runs in your mind by the diagnosis of Fredrick's ataxia. So yes, let's start with the tone examination and tone examination starts with the patients and saying that, sir, we'll just keep your legs floppy and relax as much as you can. I'd like to test the tone of your legs or muscles of your legs my dear. So what you need to do, yes, the floppy and you see the tone, you see the tone. So actually we are looking for, as I said, that we are looking for hypotonia rather than hypotonia. So the findings a bit of hypotonia is there, but once again, you don't need to take it as a hypotonia. Because as I said earlier, that you need to take the hypotonia as a findings for the upper motor neuron type of the weakness that you're expecting. But here yeah, you see, this movement, yes, you can say hypo or maybe the normal tone, it's very difficult to interpret it. And once again, the sudden movements, you see, so this is also not at least the hypotonia, it may be hypo or maybe normal tones. So this is the examinations. So immediately after that, you found that the tones are not increased, at least not increased, that you're expecting. So you shouldn't do the clonus test, my dear, because the hypertonia, if you found, then you should do the clonus, otherwise you shouldn't do that. So you found the tone is reduced or maybe the normal. And immediately after the tone that the power test that should be done, and you need to tell to your patients, sir, I'd like to assess the strength of your muscles. So what you need to do, just tell him, just raise the right leg over the bed for me without bending your right knee. Yes. So you need to tell him, so you see he's really difficult to hold it, hold the hold the right leg. Yes, raise the, yes, the raising is really difficult, but he, he can at least at this moment. On, now on the left, left side, he can, but he's unable to hold it. Yes. So he can understand, yes, his legs are really weak and the muscle strength is reduced. And you need to tell him, yes, now push onto my hands, into the bed. So yes, it's really difficult. You see, I can, I can hold it up. Now bend your knees, pull towards you. So yes, pull towards you. Don't let me straighten here. So he cannot. So you see, once again, once again, so yes. 
Now push onto my hands, push. So yes, this is also weight. Push onto my hands, push, push, push. So this is also weight. Now cock up your ankles back for me. Back, 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 back. Mm -hmm. Yes, don't let me push them down. Now push onto my hands, push, push, push. Yes, 